up, guys? Welcome to another 5-Minute Fatherhood. So a big part of what we want to encourage you guys to do is create an outpost uh, through your home. That's that's kind of the end game for a lot of what we're trying to do, a place where the kingdom is experienced and there's a you're, you're creating a house of refuge. And so I'm always on the lookout for examples of these kinds of homes. Um, and there was a home in Germany before World War II that really uh, served as a house of refuge, and that was the house of Dietrich Bonhoeffer's parents. Um, they had an amazing family, an amazing family culture. Mm-hmm. Um, both Jeff and I got geeked out years ago on oh, Eric Metaxas' book yeah. uh, on Bonhoeffer. It's such a beautiful book. But probably where that uh, home culture was best described was um, by Bonhoeffer's student, um, Otto uh, Dudze. And he says uh, this amazing description of the musical evenings at his parents' house. He said, um, whatever he had, talking about Bonhoeffer, and whatever he was, he made that accessible to others. The great treasure he possessed was the cultivated, elegant, highly educated, open-minded home of his parents, which he introduced us to. The open evenings, his house was open for his disciples and family to come eat, play music, sing stories on Friday night, which took place every week, had such an atmosphere that they became a piece of home for us as well. And then Eric goes on to say, even when Bonhoeffer went to London in 1934, his parents continued to treat these students like family, including them in the larger circle of their society and home. Bonhoeffer did not separate his Christian life from his family life. His parents were exposed to other bright students of theology, and his students were exposed to the extraordinary Bonhoeffer family. And uh, man, this is part of the, this is probably the part of the book uh, that I got that I could not get out of my head yeah. after I finished it was the way his mother uh, functioned in the home, the kind of conversations that were described in the Bonhoeffer home. And you could see how they um, cultivated a culture that, where um, Dietrich Bonhoeffer, and then you ask, how is he yeah, one of the only made people him, yeah. that could stand up yeah. uh, to Hitler uh, and really create the confessing church movement that was really, it was so important in the kingdom that there be a church in Germany um, that represented the kingdom uh, and that it really was the the church that Bonhoeffer was leading the, through the Confessing Church movement. But it was all because of the home culture that created the root structure so that he was not swayed um, yeah. by all of the propaganda that was just pouring out of Hitler's Germany. Um, so I'd really encourage you guys to look at that. I love the idea that if you want to create an outpost, then what you, you're basically creating a place where, um, as you're making disciples— as your kids are getting older and they're introducing their friends to the home, just being in your house is a discipleship experience. Yeah. Just experiencing your house is tasting the kingdom of God. The way that you guys interact, the way that you treat food and and uh, the way that you have music, um, all of these things that were just alive and beautiful in the Bonhoeffer house um, really allowed people to have that experience. Yeah, and I was going to say the same thing of just like, I think sometimes we have too much pressure on the home in some sense when it's like just invite people into yeah. what you already like, whether it's music, whether it's something, kind of create this orbit in the family um, that draws people. It's almost like this light, right? That people yeah. are drawn to the light. And so like make your home like that, right? Whether it's food, whether it's drink, whether it's music, whether it's something, create these rituals and rhythms that then people kind of start orbiting around. It reminds me too of the Brooks article, The Forged Family, where they almost, yes. you know, like the students. Like I think one thing I would say too to families is don't for sake um make sure you're prepared and ready to take in people at their most like vulnerable times like i feel like like young adults college students there's yeah. so many stages where their people are so prime and ripe to, right. to be welcomed into a home environment yeah. and usually because we are either saddled with debt or saddled with workaholism or hustle or whatever that we just like we kind of run over those seasons yeah. when it's like man almost get ready for those those seasons are awesome to yeah. invite people in it's more sustainable they can help etc yes. so i would say uh, make sure you're not forsaking those by paying attention and looking for that yeah another example is the francis schaefer labrie yeah exactly it, yep. it all came out of when his kids got to college age they just every weekend brought yep. their friends in and and that's just that is one of the most beautiful ways to have immersive discipleship yeah. through the home um, guys we also want to encourage you to rate this podcast if you have a minute um, we'd love for you to give us an honest review that's super helpful for us helpful for other dads to find out about the podcast so jump on itunes or wherever you're listening to this give us a rating uh, and do an, uh, an honest review we'd really appreciate that